it's about the 5G uh, infrastructure, and part of that uh, is going to be the LED street lighting. There is in America uh, a researcher and lighting design mathematician who says that LED in the form of uh, the new street lights and car headlights is going to cause irreparable damage to everyone's eyesight because LED light is rather like a laser light in that it's generated from a flat projector and has a beam-like capability. Could you talk about the health concerns in respect of LED light and how it might affect the optics? Right, I'll go as far as I can. Um, <clears throat> yes to eye damage, yes to skin cancer. That's, that's documented. <clears throat> um, blue light. Uh, we're look, I'm, I'm assuming the blue light you're looking at is 450 to 500 nanometers. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, right, blue light. Now, there are uh, radiation sensors, ganglions, on the sides of the eyes. Their full function isn't fully understood, but it is known they pick up radiation and they send it back to the brain. Blue light is also known to go to the retina at the back of the eye. It is known to go to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus has special enzymes. They're called uh, periods. Now the enzymes in the molecules or the cells in the hypothalamus in the brain, it is known that when the, under normal conditions without blue light, they travel to the outside of the molecule or the outside of the cell, there is a chemical reaction, I don't know what it is, but then they come back. The complete cycle takes 24 hours. Now, blue light is known to slow this down by up to two hours a day. Up to two hours a day. The hypothalamus, I know, controls the internal uh, circadian resonant frequencies, our internal clocks. The hypothalamus is also connected to the pituitary, which releases hormones and can be responsible for behavior. Now, uh, that is as far as, as my knowledge goes, but I'm just going to throw this out. Are there any medical professionals here, uh, I, I would like to know, if you slow down the hypothalamus for up to two hours a day and it is continuous, um, is there any medical professional here that could enlighten me or, and, and everybody on any knock-on effect for organs or, or whatever it is I don't know about? Um, uh, in the men, uh doing mental health studies in Malta, and they did uh, various studies. And we had what we call blue rooms, mood rooms, um, uh, which um, what you were stating there with the mitochondrial and the pituitary gland and uh, around that area. And they found that there was mood suppressor and people got, de not depressed, but um, uh, you could stabilize the mood, but it also slowed the, the functions of the mind. So what we're saying, because they couldn't hear you at the back, um, it, it will change moods and suppress processes in the mind. Yes, yes. Yeah. And they also found out taurine in Red Bull actually lifted it. Could I ask something else, sir, please? How, we're all adults uh, and we are we, we have mechanisms that, what, how would that affect sort of, and I'm thinking of a teenager who is adolescent and probably is not in full control of their emotions or moods. Could you, could you, how, could you guess or give a, a professional opinion of how that would affect an adolescent? Uh, I'm, I'm not quite on that level and I'm, and I'm going back five years okay. to this study. But it, it certainly would affect 
the stability of the mind anyway. It, it does. And actually, my okay. son is eight years old in Exwick uh, uh, Primary School. Okay. And I've noticed a mood change due to Wi-Fi activity there. Yeah. But add one thing to that, sir. I do know that in China, they have opened up medical, medical blocks now for this specific thing for children and mood changes. Uh, and the professor has written a brilliant paper. I can't remember his name. The professor has written a brilliant paper. And in the clinics right across China, the youngest child he's treating is two. I can believe it. For addiction and mood behaviour. 